have a load sheet for a job that we're going to run, and we are going to hold it, hold it out. Hold it out. Okay. We're going to find a tool in the sheet. and bring it together so that it's ready to go for the next job. So the first tool we're gonna start with is this one by 470 inch rectangular tool. So we're going to find the tool in the tool library in the rectangle section. They're all labeled based on size. So we'll just find 470 by one inch. bring that to the table and we will do that with every tool in the list until they're all ready to go. Is that okay? Right. The first step in making a tool is to find the alignment ring. This is a size one, a size one ring. So we'll take the tool, insert it into the ring like this and go over to our machine here we bring the tool holder up and since it's a rectangular tool we want that to be nice and flush so from there we tighten it with an allen wrench And then we're ready to move on to the die. We have a size one die in this case, and we need to measure that die by putting it on the tool holder and measuring the size. The tool length needs to be a standard size one die length of 0 0.709 inches. And so we just need to bring it down. And right now we're at 0.686 inches, so we'll need to put a shim underneath the die. We have three different time, types of shims, one millimeter, three millimeter, and five millimeter. So I put a five millimeter under there, and hopefully that will be close to 7 point, or point zero, 0 0.709. 0 0.706 is what it's at right now, so I'll put a point or I'll put a one millimeter shim on, and we're at 0 0.710, which is close enough to move on, but I, I never go I never go two or or two over or one under, so it should be between uh, 0 0.708 inches or 0 0.711 inches. So with the die adapter. We're going to insert the shims from the hook end. Then we need to line up the die to place it inside. I usually tap it like this just to make sure that it's in there all the way. Then we take our next Allen, Allen, Allen wrench to tighten the die. So that it doesn't come out when punching. Now the die is ready to go. So the next step is to measure the punch. We're gonna measure the tool length by setting the punch into the top of this machine until it clicks and it holds itself. And then we're gonna, just like before, it down pretty firmly. Sometimes with the quick set it'll say communication failure and that's okay just try it again. 1.446 inches is what we're measuring at so I'm gonna give it another try and it seems to be uh, it seems to be reading the same. So I'm gonna write down that tool length on a magnetic strip in the bottom left corner. So that it looks like that. And because this is a whisper tool, I'm gonna to be using a red marker instead of 
a black, blue, or green, or whatever. A whisper tool is a tool that has a punch that is at an angle instead of being flat. So anytime when you're building a tool and you see that it's angled like that in any way, write it in red so that the operator knows to say that it's a whisper tool when they set up the program. Other, most tools aren't whisper tools, so just keep an eye out when you're making these. Now that we've measured the tool length, we're going to measure the stripper depth. We'll have to turn this over, lock it in place so that it's lined up, and then take the stripper and set it into these pin slots. And then again, just bring it down, 0.486. We'll give it one more try just to make sure that it's close enough. 487, 487. So I'm going to write 487 in the bottom right hand corner so that the operator knows what the stripper depth is for it. After that's all done, we'll take it out and we will check the tool length to give it a sort of title on the top. So in this case it is 0 0.470 times 1.00 RT. RT stands for rectangle because this is a rectangle, a rectangle shape. We just need to put it in the carrier. This is the carrier that we use that we put on the, on the machine so that it can take the tool out. There are two springs on each side on the bottom that we'll just press inward and then this die holder should pop out. The die goes into the bottom part and then the, the stripper goes into the middle part and then the punch is held up on top. So first I'll put the die in. You'll just line it up with that slot until it's in there all the way. And then line it up with the bottom rack. So it goes in. You just push it in, click, and then it shouldn't fall out. I'll put the tag on the back here so that we know what this is. And then we're going to put the punch and the stripper in. These have to be put in at the same time so that they line up correctly. So we're going to use this claw to hold each piece in at the same time as it goes in. So the stripper needs to go into these two bottom pieces. They need to, the, the very middle part needs to sit right, in, right between the two and the pin should be up against the end there. So it should look like that when we put it in. Then the punch needs to go into the top arms while the stripper is in at the same time. And we always put the punch in with the hole going toward the pin in the middle, like that. This is tricky because we need to do this at the same time, and so you have to kind of put both in at the same time and line them up at the same time. So, it's going to be really hard at first when you're first doing this, but it will become second nature to you later on. So it should look just like that when it's ready. And then we'll line it up. And the punch should, the punch should fit in at the top there, replacing what these two arms are holding at the top. And then the pins should be up against this little hook. So we'll hold that in, we'll line it up, and then click it in, pull it out, and everything should be nice and tight on there so that this is now ready to go onto the machine.